वेलकम बैक टू नाबार्ड क्रैश कोर्स ओके सो वेलकम टू दी लाइव सेशन इन विच टूडे वी विल ट्राई टू डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस ऑब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन विच आर फ्रॉम आर ए आर डी क्लास ओके सो ए आर डी सब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव सम डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन वी आर डूइंग द प्रैक्टिस नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन आर नॉट लाइक फेज वन दे आर मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली फॉर फेज टू एंड फेज टू क्वेश्चन सम लाइक वी ऑल आर नोइंग देम नाउ वॉट आर डिफरेंट वेज और पैटर्न इन विच द फेज टू क्वेश्चन आर आस let's try to understand okay so let me give a quick quick brief that which type of objective questions are asked you already would be knowing that the questions for ard objective are either of two marks or either for one mark so the question is either for one mark or either for two mark the point is that overall when we are talking about one or two marks whatever one marker questions would be there of course their difficulty as well as their total length of the question would be less because of course it's for one mark so out of total 15 questions in our ard objective five would be for one mark and 10 would be for two, two marks so in total 20 plus plus 5 which gives rise to 25 25 from ARD, 25 from ESI, therefore 50 marks. So overall, if you see, when I talk about two marker question, these are full of passages. Okay. Second thing, there are certain important topics. There are certain important topics from which the questions will definitely be having higher probability to come in your phase two exam. then when we are talking about other thing which is related to phase 2 on each on each passage so one passage three questions would be associated with the one passage and this three questions would be for two marks therefore if one passage has been given to you from which three questions have been asked that passage is actually giving you six marks i hope you get it so out of 20 you can expect how much passages of course you can expect in ard 3 to 4 passages now look at it if three passages passages are there of which three questions are there on each passage so 3 three is a 9 and whatever these questions are there these are for two marks therefore 9 twos are 18 so out of this 22 markers 18 whatever questions are there these are paragraph based so if you did not understood this calculation let me help you okay if you have not understood the calculation let me just help you one more time okay no worries in first time you will not understand it actually it's a very simple calculation try if you have given phase 2 exam then only you will be knowing this many teachers even don't know this okay so when we are studying about objective that is our ard phase 2 we all know two one marker question is there okay 10 questions for two marks five questions for one mark in total 25 marks you get it you get it this is clear no worries now we all know two marker whatever questions are there these are full of passages important topics now consider this if one passage has been given to you based on this passage for example last year let's take a example of different passages which have been asked so one passage was there on your swine parturition second passage was on your battery system of poultry there was one more passage which was on rashtriya krishi vikas yojana as well as paramparagat krishi vikas yojana there was one more passage which was again related to agricultural scheme so overall when you take such examples you understand that passage was on any topic of animal husbandry was on important topic of your horticulture okay so in this way on your poultry system so each passage on each of this passage how much questions were associated three questions were associated from each of this passage that means what whatever the passage will come associated to that passage one question would be there second question would be there and third question would be there so every passage has three questions now imagine this how much total two marker 
marks we are having 20 marks right because 10 questions 10 questions 20 marks so passage maximum which come in your nabard phase 2 objective section for 2 marks is actually 2 to 3 passages or sometimes even 4 patches passages come okay so 3 passages if you are talking about that means if 3 passages are there from each passage how much questions would be there 3 questions so therefore 3 into 3 that is now 9 questions would be asked to you from these 3 passages from each passage 3 questions so therefore from 3 passage 9 questions now these 9 questions are for how much marks of course 2 marks therefore you are out of 20 marks you are having 18 marks which are based on passage so what do you mean by this you mean that there are certain important topics which now I will be telling about in within this five minutes, you will get a clarity. So let's go. Let me tell you some of the important topics which I am going to talk about. Okay. So yeah. So let's make a list of all the topics which can be there in your NABAD phase two. Let's start with our first topic and that is nothing but ARD current plus reports. If you are watching this video, you can write it down because no one will give in-depth analysis as such. ARD, government schemes. Okay. So every current aspect of ARD, which is maximum six months before the phase one and phase two exam. I hope you get it. Now, any government scheme, any report, any ARD related current affairs that could be considered for your two marker question. Second, chapter of agronomy and field crops and field crops. Now, remember very carefully, agronomy has various concepts which are related to your cultivation. It may be the way of cultivation, it may be different crops, it may be different classification of crops, it may be factors associated with the crops, it may be even the other subtopics like weed management, other subtopics like tillage, uh, germination, etc. It may be also other topics which are introductory topics like seeds, etc. Okay. Apart from that, field crops is nothing but an exhaustive list of all the field crops which are important. They may give you a paragraph on pulses. They may give you a paragraph even on different crops. And therefore, I'm telling you this, this first thing, first topic is very, very important. Next topic. After doing agronomy and field crops, we move to cropping system and cropping pattern. Okay. So, understand one thing very clearly. Cropping system, overall agricultural activity and how different, different enterprises, different, different processes, different, different activities are coming together in that agricultural overall activity. That is cropping system. Cropping pattern, the way in which the arrangement in which the crop are, crops are planted all the topics which are associated to cropping system and cropping pattern it may be intercropping it may be different types of cropping patterns it may be different types of cropping system what is intensive cropping what is commercial cropping what is uh, uh, yes what is your extensive cropping in such type of different cropping system types are also there and cropping pattern also types are there those can be also asked imagine this if i give you a paragraph which is based on extensive farming and if I ask you multiple questions on extensive farming, so of course it becomes very difficult to then solve. Okay. Similarly, consider that many of the questions are asked similarly from agroclimatic zones, maybe because agroclimatic zones is also a subtopic which is associated to cropping system and cropping pattern. Two top two important topics done. Let's move to our third topic. Our third topic would be included seed production and seed science. Now here the chance is higher that in seed production and seed science certain important concept is there that would be only asked that is classification of seeds according to certification their purity their color tags may be those may be asked for one marker not two marker but for one marker then comes fourth chapter that is your soil sciences. So when I am talking about soil sciences Again, in soil sciences, there is very high chance there are certain subtopics which you have to take very care of. First is the structure of soil. Then is the physical aspects of soil. 
सो डेंसिटी ओके ओवरऑल फिजिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सॉइल ओके एंड अदर इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट विच आर अगेन एसोसिएटेड विद फिजिकल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ सॉइल ओके दैट सेक्शन वाइट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इन नाबार्ड फेज वन दिस इ the density of sandy soil and your loamy soil as well as clay soil was asked so therefore texture of soil okay then arrangement of soil okay overall uh, uh, the structure of soil okay physical whatever features of soil these are may be these can be asked and these are asked in exams so not necessarily for two marks but one mark this can definitely be asked then fifth topic which then apart from that soil classification is also there so basic general classification of soil in india okay and classification which is based on origin by usda taxonomy both these topics are very important they may come for two marks now okay now next topic when we have completed soil we then start towards our main topic that is animal husbandry in animal husbandry from types of breeds to their uh, overall care and management then their shelter flooring uh, floor spacing everything then even individual breeds also you should take care and read about them diseases associated with also you have to read about them this we are done with cattle after doing with cattle come to poultry similarly in poultry all types of breed all types of again uh, important systems in which care management and shelter is done so battery system open litter system okay clothes cage system in this way you have to cover them then again go for swine husbandry in similarly for all such animal husbandry whatever animals are there there are certain aspects you have to cover okay apart from that technical things also you have to cover for example estrus cycle parturition such processes for each of the animals you have to cover technical animal husbandry is very very technical subject and that is why such topics you have to cover them in depth okay very very high chance that it may come for again two marker because here from animal husbandry it becomes very easy to take out a passage from this topic now what to do for for if you are preparing for animal husbandry and fisheries and horticulture forestry then use tamil nadu agricultural university website because nabard has a habit of picking the paragraphs from tnau so therefore a good hint for you then after animal husbandry again comes fisheries in fisheries also types of fishery culture types of different types of fisheries different breeds of indigenous fishes as well as exotic fishes this you have to cover at the same same like animal husbandry then horticulture and plantation now in horticulture and plantation again classification of horticultural crops total list exhaustive you have to do other than that vegetative propagation very very important topic from horticulture so therefore you have to do that there may be a paragraph other than that in horticulture also animal husbandry also and all these chapters when i am talking about if there is any dedicated scheme of government then you have to cover that for example in horticulture there are various schemes like chaman okay there are various schemes which are associated to this horticulture like midh so therefore you have to cover them now midh has been not asked in previous years question of nabard therefore you have to cover it in animal husbandry similarly national livestock mission still it has been not asked in nabard for phase 2 that is for two marks it may come up this time so in same way for example fisheries in context of fisheries blue revolution even your pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana it may come up for two marks okay so therefore you have to cover this after fisheries we come to horticulture horticulture then forestry in forestry only classification of forestry is enough other than that nothing there is no like there is very less chance that they may ask you the question one more thing in forestry there would be different species of trees those can come for only one mark not for two marks so if from forestry any descriptive question is coming or two marker question is coming it will 100% come from the classification of forest nothing else simple important topics like social forestry agroforestry okay community forest uh, forestry uh, other than that uh, silviculture uh, uh, right silvi uh, silvi pasture uh, okay silvi pasture culture okay that also you have to do so different types of forestry are there you have to cover them whatever types are there you have to cover them extensively you will not leave one also paradigm unturned okay here we complete our overall agricultural core topics other than that which topic we are left with now one marker agri engineering from that one marker question may come up Ag extension education from that one marker question may come up okay 
Other than that, if I try to tell you, rural development, whatever our chapter is and panchayati raj institution, very high chance government scheme will come related to that. It may be MG Narega, it may be Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadok Yojana, it may be even Swachha Bharat scheme. It doesn't really matter. As long as that scheme is in rural area, that very, very high chance that out of the three passages, two passages would be from core agricultural and rural development static chapters and one would be, of course, your government scheme. Okay, so in ARD also one passage would be 100% government scheme. I already told you Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana has been a previous year question. This is all about ARD objective. Within this much only time, you will get a very brief idea that what I have to do and what I have to not do. Okay, now let us move towards our next important topic that is your today. Yeah, so now let us discuss our first objective question. Now, why first briefing I gave you? Because for many students, I know time is very, very less. So therefore, what within the stipulated time, we will try to discuss some important sections which are very important for you. Now, based on the statement mentioned, find the type of farming mentioned. Okay, statements are there. You have to find which type of farming it is. First is no use of synthetic fertilizer. Conventional farming, it is not there, right? So therefore, any type of conventional farming, we can eliminate. Mixed farming, it is one type of conventional, intensive, conventional. In mixed farming, do we use chemical fertilizers? Yes, do we? We do use. Or there is no any statement in mixed farming that says that we are not using chemical fertilizers. In intensive farming, we use chemical fertilizers a lot. In integrated farming, do we use it? Now, there may be some people who may be saying that integrated farming is such an activity in which multiple agricultural practices, processes are brought under one umbrella term. But at the same time, in integrated farming, it has been never written that chemical fertilizers are not used. Therefore, the answer here is, of course, organic farming. Organic farming is the solution. As we all know, from the first statement only, you will understand synthetic, any synthetic, any chemical thing is not used in organic farming. More use of manures, that is, which are of organic sources, that is the main predominant feature of organic farming. Next question, paragraph based. A subcomponent of soil health management scheme under National Mission of Sustainable Agriculture, NMSA, aims at development of models of excellence in organic farming through a mix of traditional wisdom and modern science in value chain mode to install sustainability, ensure long-term fertility, build up resource conservation and offer a safe and healthy food grown through organic practices without the use of agrochemicals. Identify the scheme given below. If you read the passage completely, you will understand that there are some keywords here from which you can easily find out the answer. So look at here, the second or our third line, you will understand that this particular scheme, whichever we are talking about, it is a mix of traditional wisdom and modern science. Traditional is an English word. In Hindi, tradition is nothing but parampara. So therefore, here paramparagat krishi vikas yojana, this is a particular agricultural scheme which again is in organic domain only. So how much organic, uh, what are the government initiatives in organic farming? First is of course, you are moving organic value chains for northeastern region. That is M-O-V-D-C-E-R. Second is your, of course, Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana. Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana. And what is third? Of course, Organic Farming Certification, NPOP. That is certification. The organization NPOP looks after the certification of organic produce. These three things are associated again with your organic farming. Therefore, here the answer is Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana. National Agricultural Market, E-NAM. It is more of an online platform for your agricultural marketing as well as selling your produce online. Second, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. It is an insurance scheme. World's even recent data. If you see the reports on Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, you can say it's world's largest agricultural insurance crop scheme. Pradhan Mantri Krisi Sinchai Yojana. World's largest agricultural irrigational scheme in terms of expansion, in terms of area covered. Okay. So these are all the important schemes. Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana is our answer. 
देन नेक्स्ट द सोल्यूशन एज यू सी परंपरागत कृषि विकास योजना इट इज अ सब कंपोनेंट ऑफ विच गवर्नमेंट स्कीम येस इट इज अ सब कंपोनेंट ऑफ सॉइल हेल्थ मैनेजमेंट स्कीम अंडर नेशनल मिशन ऑफ सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर एंड नेशनल मिशन ऑफ सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर इज अंडर राष्ट्रीय कृषि विकास योजना सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑटोमेटिकली परंपरागत कृषि विकास योजना इज अंडर अंडर राष्ट्रीय कृषि विकास योजना ऑल्सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द डिसीज डिस्क्रिप्शन हैज बीन गिवन एंड वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट विच डिसीज इट इज ओके सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिसीज सिम्टम्स आर कैरेक्टराइज बाय एन इनिशियल स्लाइट येलोइंग ऑफ द फॉलिएज and wilting of the upper leaves that progress in a few days to a permanent wilt with the leaves still attached the time above ground symptoms are evident the vascular system of the plant is discolored and particularly in the lower stem and roots identify the disease overall if you read it yellowing of the foliage takes place so green color turns out to be yellow upper leaves that progress in few days into permanent wilt that means drying of the upper leaves of the plant which are at the upper side the wilting takes place what is wilting it is nothing but drying or death of the tissue on the leaves so overall these are some of your features the options are given anthraconose fusarium wilt collar rot basal rot and powdery mildew we have to understand now here if you are knowing either if you are knowing description of a particular disease you can give the answer okay so here your answer of course is b okay now why it is fusarium wilt why it is not anthraconose we will try to understand if you look at all the diseases here okay look at look at them in depth fusarium wilt is of course characterized by wilting of the plant upward and inward rolling of the wheel where the leaves of the plant dry up and the discoloration also happens in yellow color whereas if you look at other diseases like anthraconose it is nothing but rotting okay as well as black color spots you can see on the plant some features i am telling with which you can remember that particular disease collar rot again rotting of the upper part of the stem basal rot at the base rotting takes place and powdery mildew white white powdered substance looking like fungus grows because of the again your attack of the pest okay so it's pest infestation also as well as one of the vector based disease also so in this way here we get an answer that this of this particular question that is fusarium wilt symptoms yellowing of the foliage wilting of the upper leaves which we already discussed now question number 4 it is a society formed in 2006 under the aegis of marine products export development authority mpeda kochi the society functions as an extension arm of mpeda in capture fishery sector and supports in improving the quality of fishery products exported from country and sustainability of the fishery resources as well identify the society now one thing i'll tell you before going for any preparation as well as before going to the exam of nabard phase 2 remember one thing very clearly before going to phase 2 exam on 19 november go through nabard's website properly dedicate half an hour and go through every page of nabard's website apart from that go through apeda's website holistically then go through mpeda's website holistically go through all the agricultural reports in last 6 month holistically complete agricultural current affairs also okay and some agricultural government schemes which are important in this last quarter if you do this i am telling you the current part definitely you will not lose your marks there apart from that in economic survey and budget only in economic survey and budget you have to cover agricultural part okay do economic survey budget you have to also cover from esi point of view i am telling that only when you will sit to cover or maybe to revise the budget and your economic survey also remember that you don't skip agricultural part there okay so the answer if you try to see what is it n n a c n a c s a net fish r g c a s p f a and mpeda fish so the answer here is b that is net fish of course it is network for fish quality management and sustainable fishing net fish it is a society formed in 2006 it is a arm of mpeda now why this particular society is there simple this net fish is there 
it functions as an extension arm to capture fishery sector and support its improving quality in fishery products which could be exported even out of the country so it is an arm which is looking at processing of the fishes exporting of the fishes as well as overall even it's a platform where even fishery stakeholders can involve for the fishery management conservation as well as sustainable process okay so this is what this particular net fish was next again a paragraph based question in a working paper under the title from green revolution to amrit kal lessons and way forward for indian agriculture the author said the two biggest challenges facing the planet are climate change and over exploitation and degradation of natural resources the type and methods of farming have a significant bearing on these the authors made a strong case for ushering in the fish investment into the sector and for the greater role of private sector this above paper was published by dash a oh, very very beautiful question now what is this particular passage about so recently in the last 1 to 2 months a paper came out which talk, which talked about green revolution to amrit kal that is our journey of indian agriculture from green revolution of 1967 to amrit kal that is 2019 or 2022 what lessons have we learned in our indian agriculture the author had said that the two biggest challenges on the planet right now in context of agriculture first is climate change and second is over exploitation and degradation of natural resources again which are both of the topics are heavily affecting agriculture like anything else so therefore such a important whatever passage is there which was mentioned in an paper which recently came out which organization published this paper imf fao undp ilo and niti aayog now remember very carefully see what i am trying to tell how to use logic try to understand imf maybe can give the passage on this there may be a chance that the paper may be from I imf fao yes very high chance it can be there fao is an agricultural organization now undp united nations development program undp will not see about agriculture per se it looks after developmental spheres in the developed underdeveloped and developing countries you got the point so therefore undp you can definitely eliminate ilo i don't think ilo would be interested to again do a extensive research and paper on the agricultural field they are a labor organization therefore you eliminate ilo also and you are left with niti aayog now look at the question carefully this particular paper is only related to indian agriculture and that is why there may be high chance that the answer can be niti aayog and if you have read about it then yes the answer is correct niti aayog is its answer uh actually this paper was published by the federal policy think tank niti aayog the title was from green revolution to amrit kal the lessons and the way forward for indian agriculture a very important paper this is you can read it if you want to next question which of the following statements are correct about the pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana what i think is that in nabar 2022 as i expected that at that time a descriptive question came on pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana now why it came because in the year of 2022 there blue revolution was always into the news and that is why mainly this matsya sampada yojana came into the question now point is is blue revolution important for this year yes of course it is now whatever this particular decade is there in this particular decade we are looking at blue revolution more marine production export of these marine products also and developing marine whatever products are there as well as fisheries sector we are trying to develop that same in like agriculture my point is very very simple if they have asked a descriptive question on this topic they will not ask it again so therefore they, like they can ask it but the higher chances that it may come for two mark there may be a passage on pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana or on whole fisheries sector itself first statement says it is a umbrella scheme with two separate components central sector and central sponsor pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana has been approved at a total estimated investment of rupees 20050 crores and matsya sampada yojana will be implemented in all the states and union territories for the period of 5 years from 2018 19 to 2023 so tell me which statements are right and which statements are wrong so this you can definitely sorry this you can definitely tell me 
so overall if you read all the statements you will understand that all the statements here are actually correct so let's read about pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana first thing to understand is of course very important scheme related to your fisheries production productivity quality post harvest technology export etc two components are there central sector centrally sponsored centrally sponsored is again segregated into non beneficiary oriented and beneficiary oriented which is again under three broad heads enhancement of production and productivity infrastructure and post harvest management and fishery management and regulatory framework other than that yes total investment is 2050 crores 20000 crores and it is implemented in five period for the period of five years from the year of 2021 to 2024 2025 again we are in the year of 2023 2024 so therefore you could see here that's why they can highly ask this particular scheme again now seventh question the portal provides both static and dynamic information related to agricultural marketing in india the static information is about related storage warehouse cold storage packing facilities market related market fees charges weightage handling market functionaries development program market laws composition income expenditure promotion related information pledge financing market credit new opportunities etc the dynamic part comprises price related information comprising maximum and minimum prices and model prices for various varieties of crops what is this portal icap enam apeda agmart and agriwatch bahut hi important like this is a very very important question if you try to observe again this particular question the answer we all would be knowing it is of course not enam actually it's agmart now then let's try to first segregate what enam does different and how agmart does different enam is an op of course enam is also a portal but it is a open portal as well as one of the websites second important thing is that national agriculture and market it is more about selling your products buying your products it is a online market so when you are thinking about enam you will always a online market should come in your head so therefore you cannot say that this particular passage is on enam because this particular portal it's talking about static information that is storage facility available apart from that in market market fee charges weightage handling how they are going to do in market these are see these informations could be ancillary and could be on enam but the main purpose of enam is sell and buy online here you could see even infrastructure related information is there even market related information is there even your promotion related information is there even phyto sanitary sanitary requirements marketing credit and new opportunities information so agmart is nothing but if you try to see it's an agricultural marketing portal enam is marketing portal for buying and selling of crops whereas agmart it's for covering or linking information network which connects different agricultural markets state marketing boards as well as different stakeholders to the website of national and international organizations it provides both static as well as dynamic information which we all read right now so the difference between enam and agmart i hope you got it in agmart you are getting static as well as dynamic information related to different dimensions in enam it is a simple portal to buy and sell your crops now question number 8 now look at this on horticulture how beautifully i made a passage it's an herbaceous perennial herbaceous in the sense lushy green plant perennial in the sense it requires the growth of more than one year the tree trunk is also called as pseudo stem because it does not lignify or undergo secondary growth the pseudo stem is a cylinder of tightly bound leaf petioles that arise directly from the underground stem or rhizome so this particular crop could be considered as rhizome growing crop the pseudo stem color may be green red purple black and can contribute to the ornamental quality of the plant identify the plant simple here only one logic is there if you read the passage you may think it is difficult but as rhizome is there just identify which of the following plant is rhizome and then eliminate rest of the plant okay so from that you will definitely get the answer the answer here is c that is your banana of course this question is very difficult why it is very difficult we all know that ginger could be grown through rhizome but we never know that banana also could be grown through rhizome but here elimination we can use 
पोटैटो इज इट अ राइजोम क्रॉप नो इट इज अ ट्यूबर इट्स अ स्टेम टोमैटो वॉट टाइप ऑफ क्रॉप इज इट नो इट इज नीदर ऑफ द वेजिटेटिव प्रोपोगेशन क्रॉप सो दर फॉर टोमैटो वी डोंट फाइंड इट इन द ग्राउंड इट सेल्फ वीट फाइंड इट अपवर्ड्स मैंगो अगेन एंड हार्डवुड ट्री राइट टैपियोका अंडरग्राउंड क्रॉप ऑफकोर्स ओके अंडरग्राउंड क्रॉप एंड एक्सटेन्सिव अगेन ट्यूबर क्रॉप लाइक पोटैटो सो पोटैटो Tapioca we eliminated, tomato, mango these are well growing trees eliminated. So with elimination you are getting answer banana. But a little bit more depth of knowledge is required. So banana plant if you see it is an perennial plant of course, and it has a pseudo stem. If you see the pseudo stem, what is pseudo stem? Of course if you see the banana you can remove the skin of the banana skin or extra part is there on banana. Okay this is not actually the skin but the upper part. If you look at that banana, banana's upper skin, it may be either green in color. Sometimes for some banana species, it's red. For some, it is purple. So in this way, this is nothing but your, of course, banana. Therefore, the growth, if you see of the banana, it could be considered as rhizome. Why? If you cut the part of a banana, okay, root, and if you one part of root or part of banana, if you keep it, then you could see that new plant will come out of it. So in this way, overall, if you see. Yeah, it is well suited for the cultivation in humid tropical. This some information is given related to plantation of banana. But overall, if you see whatever pseudo stem is there, that is banana plant. If you see, it is like a cylinder with multiple green, purple, red coverings on it, which looks like a which is a fleshy bark, which stem you can remove. This whatever petioles are there, these rise directly from the underground stem or from rhizome. So in banana, if you see, no seeds are there. Through seeds, propagation of banana doesn't take place. So therefore, root that is nothing but banana also grows in form of rhizome. Next, question number nine. Which of the following statements are correct regarding Narmada Nidhi, a hybrid variety of chicken? A very good question. It has been asked. Recent current affairs related question. Statements are Narmada Nidhi as an improved location specific variety of chicken developed by College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry. It has been developed by crossing Kadaknath. Which is native chicken breed with Jabalpur color broiler. It is a dual purpose colored chicken variety. A very beautiful question here. If you see such questions can definitely come in uh, in your NABAR phase two exam. That also for two marks. So therefore, if you see the answer is of course all the statements are correct. No doubt about it. So what is this Narmada Nidhi? It is nothing but it is a type of chicken developed by College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry. Which is located in Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. Now we all know Madhya Pradesh is famous for Kadaknath, and that is why in Madhya Pradesh, Kadaknath, whatever native chicken breed is there, it has been crossed with Jabalpur, your chicken. So Jabalpur, whatever chicken is there, it is little bit reddish color in in color. So therefore, the new variety, whatever is there of crossing Jabalpur and Kadaknath, that is called as Narmada. Nidhi. It is a dual purpose colored variety, okay, and multicolored plumage is there, black color, brown color, gray color, and mixed color is also available. So this is what the overall news is. Next question number ten. This scheme was started in December two thousand four with an outlay of rupees twenty five crores and has been fragmented into two separate schemes: dairy venture capital fund and poultry venture capital fund. For from the financial year of two thousand eight two thousand nine, identify the scheme. now looking at dairy and looking at poultry we understand that this particular government scheme is of course for your animal husbandry so therefore what i think is here whatever the schemes are there you can look at it rashtriya gokul mission national program for dairy development national livestock mission and dairy entrepreneurship development scheme and none of these so here all the options are very very close and that is why for phase 2 examination you cannot just have generic information to solve the questions we saw nabar phase 1 result many of the students what i have experienced in our live sessions also as well as on our various groups what i have seen is many of the students expected that they would be clearing the exam but still they cleared the exam why because phase 1 ard section came little bit easy and overall phase 1 exam also sometimes it comes easy it is very possible that if you are doing study or preparation very fairly you will clear that exam so for many students this ard esi questions were easy but for phase 2 the conditions are not alike for phase 2 you will find that it would be very difficult to solve such questions look at it you cannot even pick one option here so answer here is of course dairy develop 
एंटरप्रिनरशिप डेवलपमेंट स्कीम नाउ यर यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड यू कैन इलिमिनेट एक्चुअली राष्ट्रीय गोकुल मिशन गोकुल मिशन इज जस्ट फॉर कैटल्स वेर एज यर दे आर ऑल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट पोल्ट्री वेंचर कैपिटल फंड एंड वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वेंचर कैपिटल इट इज ऑलवेज असोसिएटेड विथ स्टार्टअप एंड स्टार्टअप अगेन कम्स अ कनेक्टेड वर्ड दैट इज एंटरप्रिनरशिप सो देर फॉर दिस वॉज द लॉजिक थ्रू विच यू कैन कम टू द एंसर सो earlier this whatever your dairy entrepreneurship development scheme was there it had two parts that is dairy or poultry venture capital fund okay then in the financial year of 2008 9 those two whatever schemes were there they fragmented and became two separate scheme otherwise earlier earlier they were under this dairy entrepreneurship development scheme so nabard also is there it will be nodal agency of this scheme that's it this is the important part next question which is based on of course our cropping system cropping pattern so cropping systems are given we have to find which is incorrect so look at the options also properly subsistence farming system shifting cultivation and nomadic pastoralism subsistence farming is nothing but doing the agricultural activity only for the survival of your you and yourself and your family so therefore whatever produce is there that is not sold in market but that is for self consumption keyword is self consumption shifting cultivation is nothing but of course it is a way of doing agriculture by moving from one land by felling of trees to the other land okay and then comes nomadic pastoralism it is nothing but when people are moving from one place to other place where there is no proper settlement and where their occupation and livelihood is rather dependent on pastoralism or domestication of animals and therefore for grazing purposes they move from one place to other the third option seems to be correct here pastoralism pastoralism word association also you could do one two are actually interchanged here so therefore one two is wrong c should be our answer and c is the answer subsistence farming is nothing but of course maintaining whatever crops livestock which are raised only used to maintain the farmer and farmer's family for self consumption shifting cultivation moving from one land to other where fields or forest areas are cleared by felling of trees and nomadic pastoralism moving from one place to other in hope of occupation or livelihood next question is on fisheries although i have seen that in phase 2 there has been never a descriptive question on fisheries and there has been also no question which is passage based on fisheries for two marks in objective also what i think is that fisheries is very important topic so therefore you can hope that there may be a question either in descriptive or in objective oceanodromus catamodromus and anemodromus all these three options are given and you have to find out which are incorrect we already have discussed a lot about this type of particular questions and if you see c is the answer here that means one and two are incorrect which means third is only correct what is oceanodromous fish fishes which are born near spawning grounds and they drift on ocean currents as larva before settling as juveniles to grow into adults before migrating back to spawning grounds that means they move from fresh to of course your sea water catamodromous fish if we talk about these spend most of their life in fresh water and then migrate to salt water to spawn so catamodromous from fresh water to salt water and from ocean oceanodromous are nothing but from salt water to fresh water anemodromous if you see okay these are migrate these species migrate as juveniles from fresh water to salt water and then return as adults to spawn in fresh water so again they also come back in this way this are the options so in this case third was only correct and this are the correct options which has been given as i already discussed that many questions have not come in can come up in fisheries consider following statements regarding crop geometry rectangular method of sowing here if you see as i was showing you what is rectangular method of sowing as i told you rectangular method is nothing but when i am trying to crop in rectangular shape so overall rectangular when i am talking about even we are having rows and even we are having columns so therefore this is your rectangular system then what is quincux system quincux system or diamond system is nothing but a square system only but four crops on the four 
vertices of the square and one crop at its center which is crossing the diagonals so therefore if you see in such a way quincux systems transforms in such a way Okay, so in this way it expands. This is your quincux, that's your rectangular. Triangular, triangular is nothing but simple. So triangular is nothing but simple in the same fashion if you see. Triangular is nothing but when crops are in triangular shape. So one inverted triangle, one upward triangle, one inverted triangle. One upward triangle, one inverted triangle. So, in this way, one upward, one inverted triangle. In this way, this is the cropping pattern which is your triangular system. Overall, what we were said, what we were said to find incorrect statements. And here, if you see again, all the statements are correct, therefore, incorrect statements are none. So, therefore, rectangular method is nothing but rows and columns are there, row spacings are wider. In rectangular, we saw it is of rectangular shape therefore most of the crops whatever are planted in rectangular they are little bit properly spaced quincux or diamond pattern is generally used for horticultural crops where the isolation distance is maintained between each crop and within a particular unit land more crops are grown with a proper health and proper growth if you try to decrease the isolation distance between the crops there is very high chance that pest attack or any type of disease may spread very quickly. So, quincux or diamond system is an ideal system where the distance is neither wide and neither narrow. Triangular method is generally used for plantation crops like coconut as well as other crops. Then comes consider following statements related to soil. Edaphology is the study of soil from the standpoint of higher plants. Romano wall Valkowski, a Russian scientist, is commonly regarded as father of soil science and wilting point is the moisture content of soil at which plants permanently wilt and will not recover. Wilting point, wilting is nothing but drying of leaves. Wilting point is nothing but at that point where sufficient water is not there in the ground and therefore as sufficient water is not there in the ground, whatever water requirement of the plant is there that is not sustained or that is not provided and therefore plant whatever is there again like all the other animals it grows through dehydration because of which the leaves or the tissues the cells they dry up and they die so in this way wilting is this so overall they have told you to find correct statements and here one and three is correct why because it was not romano velkowski but rather it was vasily vasilievich dokichev a russian scientist which is commonly regarded as father of soil sciences. Edapology, of course, it is study of soil from the point of view of higher plants and wilting point is yes, that level of moisture content in the soil where plants completely dry and will not recover. Then 14th question, statements related to Atal Bhujal Yojana, irrigation or water related scheme. Okay, water resources related scheme. First statement, Central sector scheme with a total outlay of 6,000 crore implemented over the period of 5 years, 21 to 25. Out of total outlay, 50% shall be in form of World Bank loan and repaid by central government. And Atal Bhujal Yojana has been implemented in 10 water stress, stressed states of India. Select correct answer, they are saying. So, what statements are correct and what statements are wrong, they are trying to tell us. The answer is B, 1 and 2. The third is wrong. Let's see why. So, statement 1 is correct. Why? It's a central sector scheme with a total outlay of 6,000 and for the period of 5 years from 2021 to 2025. That's correct. If you see next statement, statement number 3, which is incorrect, the scheme aims to improve groundwater management through community participation identified in priority areas of 7 states. Gujarat, Haryana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. 
सो ओवरऑल हियर टेन वॉटर स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेस्ड स्टेट हैव बीन मेन्शन बट एक्चुअली इट्स ओनली सेवन Now again, statement two is correct. Why out of its total six thousand crore outlay, fifty percent should be in form of World Bank loan and repaid by central government? That's it. Fifteenth last question: Which of the following practices will lead to soil conversion? Uh, conservation, sorry, soil conservation. What will be practices which will result into soil conservation? No tillage farming. Is it soil conservation? Yes. Most sustainable practice of tillage. What is it? Zero tillage, no tillage, and conservation tillage. contour plowing yes because of contour what happens extra retention of water extra seepage of water good rain water harvesting and rain storage therefore contour plowing also afforestation yes more the vegetation more is the ground water level recharge then shifting cultivation no shifting cultivation could not be considered as soil conservative practice why because trees are felled and trees are burned down terrace farming of course yes terrace farming is nothing but creating burns contours and on flat creating flat plains on slippy slopes uh, slippery slopes on the mountain hills and making agriculture there such that because of the excessive flow the soil will not be eroded so without four what are our options 1 2 3 and 5 and c should be our answer and of course c is our answer now there are many students who would be saying that surat sir every time like phase 1 only you are again making practicing us the questions only why you are doing question practice why we are doing we have done enough practice in phase 1 now remember for objective questions which we are doing practice in phase 1 that objective questions practice is actually one of the very easy uh, mock test or questions which would be there according to the phase 1 so we all whatever students are there those who have cleared phase 1 they would have got an idea that okay uh, one one marker single liners okay uh, overall in phase 1 for ard per se if we are talking 40 questions are there distribution only looking at the paper you will directly understand that that particular distribution seems to be almost 5 to 10 questions are easy 10 to 15 questions are moderate and the remaining question 10 to again 5 to 10 are very very difficult which of course it would be tricky to solve them but the point is that in phase 1 you get enough chance as easy and moderate questions are there and that also these questions are not lengthy but the problem in phase 2 the question comes that both type of questions are asked phase 2 that is two marker and one marker in phase 2 now one marker may be easy there is a possibility that it may be easy but there is also no guarantee for example in last year what i saw was even scientific name was asked in phase 2 for one marker strawberry its scientific name was asked so such questions always it would be a googly i would say we all play cricket right it would be a googly so you never know a two marker question will come difficult in phase 2 or one marker question will come difficult so that is why a proper preparation is required when we are beginning and when we are looking at the objective questions this specific objective questions which i have given are more or less at the level of phase 2 let's go through our first question the tree found in cooler regions with silver or dark green leaves young trees begin in pyramidal shape and then as they mature their branches become broader and more horizontal with flat tops the tree reaches up to the height of 76 meter tree ka koi bhi feature diya hai aur hame find out karna hai ki ye tree hai kaun sa ab ek baat yaad rakhna what what things are given in this particular question first this trees are found in cooler region with silver or a dark green leaves silver in the sense whitish color patches would be there on green colored leaves young trees begin in pyramidal shape so young trees whatever their canopy is there it seems to be like a pyramid so it is looking like a coniferous tree so if you look at all these particular trees you will understand for example khair option scientific name in our phase 1 so therefore spurge khair haldu sisam devadar all are forest strip hardwood trees if you look at sisam sisam cannot be the answer here we know sisam is nothing but of course your timber related where uh, even tables any uh, uh, your cupboard or even chair is prepared from sisam so sisam is generally used as a good quality timber now sisam when you look it's a timber tree and therefore i don't think colder regions such timber trees are grown okay and more importantly silver colored leaves it is not having of course 
haldu khair also these are conifer strip and more importantly khair if you see katechu i don't think so that whatever these features are there actually these features if you see these are of devdar tree so a is the answer it is a true cedar cedar apple vinegar cedar okay uh, then other cedar would be your uh, uh, maple syrup these whatever maple tree is there these are different different types of devdar so cedar cedar is nothing but these trees are hardwood trees also coniferous could be grown majorly in cold regions in canada if you you will see as well as in uh, the tundra regions majorly cedar trees you can see cedrus devdar is the scientific name family is pinacea total it is a tall tree with large trunks massive and irregular head of spreading branches young trees are covered with smooth dark gray bark that becomes brown fissured fissured and scaly now it is not only impressive in height but also by the way of branches this tree and it has life span life span up to 1000 other than that if you see wild birds are also uh, the tree is a shelter for wild birds now this particular tree if you see this is devdar and also in colder regions you could see the greener or maybe little bit silver patches you could see on the leaves the major thing here to identify was the height of the tree the overall canopy growth and the colder regions which are required for growth then the next question question number 2 consider the following statements about submission on agricultural scheme that is smam submission on agricultural scheme okay mechanization scheme so 80% of project cost for a project costing rupees 10 lakh is provided to cooperative societies fpo and panchayat so 80% project cost for cooperative fpo panchayat 40% to 50% cost depending on the category of farmers is provided for purchase of agricultural machinery okay considered for north eastern states farm machinery bank is at 95% of project cost up to rupees 10 we have to find out which statement is true now the point here is that that is why as i told you that is why government scheme is very very important now agricultural government scheme if you take out a list how to prepare for agricultural government schemes it's very very simple you take agricultural government scheme you take it there are certain points of agricultural government schemes which you are going to cover but before that you should understand which are important from nabar point of view and which are not so that is why make first the list do not prepare first make make a list for example first list i am going to make is nothing but all the agricultural government scheme which are important for improving the productivity as well as improving agricultural conditions so for for example rashtriya krishi vikas yojana okay apart from that the other agricultural improvement whatever schemes are there i'll make a list of them maybe 5 6 7 8 schemes are there then i will take all the agricultural economics related that is agricultural insurance related okay any other agricultural whatever if for example pm kisan pm kisan is again related to what your remuneration for farmers right social security scheme so again whatever such finance related agricultural schemes are there i'll be giving that okay making the list 2 3 4 whatever are there then i can go to the whatever irrigational resources and water resources government schemes are there in agriculture so from pradhan mantri krishi sincha yojana to various other schemes i can write them in that i can also add jal jeevan mission okay this also i can add as in our ard rural development is also there then we can move towards of course soil related soil related whatever schemes are there soil health card everything <laughs> then animal husbandry related whatever schemes are there we will from national livestock mission gokul mission etc fisheries related forestry related any scheme is there mechanization related any scheme is there okay seed related any scheme is there organic farming related any scheme is there technology related whatever governments initiatives or maybe nabards any initiative from kvks to icar institutes so in this way you have to make a list and then prepare holistically each each topic if you have written a scheme on submission on agricultural mechanization you definitely have to complete all these points so the answer here is e because all the statements are correct here so you look submission on agricultural mechanization implemented in 2014 15 ministry is of course ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare if you look at all other important points it is to increase farm mechanization to small and marginal farmer whatever small and marginal farmers are there right now in the country they are facing a small two important problems first fragmentation of land major of the agricultural whatever community is there this is 
small and marginal. That means they are having more than two hectares of land with them. With such a small scale of land, in order to do agricultural cultivation in such a land, you cannot apply the high heavy agricultural mechanization in such small unit of land. So heavy tractors, okay, rotavators cannot be used in such land. Also on the top of that, when you are considering small and marginal farmers, their earning or their whatever uh, income is there from the agricultural activity, that is not sound enough that they can buy tractors. So therefore, submission on agricultural mechanization is all about providing mechanization to all the farmers who are not having proper income, who are not rich, who are not following intensive farming, but rather any type of agriculture and if they are holding a land of small and marginal holdings. Okay. So in this way, 42, if you see financial assistance, 40 to 50 percent cost depending on the categories of the farms provided only for agricultural machines. 40 percent of project cost is provided to rural youth, farmers, entrepreneurship, then various societies, FPOs, panchayats, etc, etc. At for the establishment of custom hiring centers and high tech hubs of high value agricultural machine. So what does this custom hiring centers and high tech hubs do? Custom hiring centers and high tech hubs do nothing but they provide a high value agricultural machine, technology or innovation to various problems of farmers. In such a way, whatever resources are there related to technology, those can be shared even to small and marginal farmers. And 80% of projects up to 10 lakh cost is provided to the co-op again whatever organizations are there, cooperatives, FPOs, NGOs, etc. And northeastern states, if, if you are establishing farm machinery bank, then 90% of the project cost up to 10 lakh rupees is again taken by the, as we read in the third st statement, it is also taken by the government. So in this way, this was our second question, all the statements were true. Now we read a paragraph based question. We take a paragraph based question when we are taking it, one thing to understand. During the year 2021, India imported 133.5 lakh tons of edible oil, out of which the share of palm oil was around 56%. The National Mission on Edible Oils, Oil Palm, so National Mission on Edible Oil and Edible Palm, totally is a scheme, has been launched with the aim to augment the availability of edible oil in the country by harnessing the area expansion, increasing crude palm oil production with the aim to reduce import burden. Now look at it very carefully. If you see overall India, apart from whatever other crops are there, main crops of India, if I tell you, this could be rice, okay, pulses including dals and most importantly, your wheat, okay. So whenever we are talking about your palm oil or edible oil, okay, in India, Whenever, if you see from north to south or from east to west, oil is very, very essential. If you see, look at your morning food, evening food or afternoon food. For all, any type of cooking activity, you would be needing oil. And that is why for a populated country like India, the demand for edible oil is always higher. You pick any month in a year, you pick any day in a, uh, in a year, you will always require oil, right? So therefore, in India, the domestic demand of the oil is very, very high. To satisfy that domestic demand as well as to keep some buffer for the future, therefore, government is not just relying for their edible oil and palm oil production on the farmers in the country, that is domestic production. They also import oil on the larger scale. This oil import is not only from certain uh, not only from our neighbors, but rather most importantly, if I tell you oil import in India, it is done by some of the African countries as well as most importantly, Southeast Asian nations. So, Malaysia, Philippines, okay, Indonesia, from here major edible oil and palm oil as well as some parts of Africa, here palm oil is important in the India. Now, some people may say, sir, if we have, if we as a agricultural country, if we are producing high numbers of or maybe our production is high in palm oil as well as in edible oil. Then why do we import again? So the point is very simple. Whatever palm oil we produce or edible oil we produce from all the oil seeds, okay, 
that some part is again exported also the, the remaining part is sold into the local market still the total demand sometimes is not satisfied and that is why to maintain a overall demand and supply chain balanced we also import the crude oil uh, uh, or palm oil or crude edible oil now one problem is there in this context now this was going well till 2010 2014 after 2014 we found that indian palm oil or our edible oil production has been increased to a larger extent but at the same time our import is not decreasing as our whatever linkages are there of export and import it's very difficult to stop a trade between two countries so therefore here you could see whatever palm oil production or whatever this scheme is it includes assistance of planting material intercropping gestation period of 4 years maintenance establishment of seed gard gardens and various support for cultivation of oil palms so now you would have understand majorly our concern of domestic production domestic supply and on the top of that the import of crude uh, of crude edible oil and palm oil coming into the country is majorly based on an imbalance between the domestic demand as well as the export so therefore and domestic production so question number 3 if you see what on the on the same paragraph if you see on the same paragraph now what indian government is trying to do indian government is trying to do that we will not cut out the imports from southeast asian nations as well as from africa for palm oil but what we will try to do is that we will try to in in gradual phase or in step by step phase we will try to cut down the imports of palm oil or are edible oil and in the similar fashion whatever domestic palm oil and edible palm oil uh, edible oil is there the production domestic is there that should be increased and whatever the surplus is there that should be exported to the other developed countries like uk canada america right there it should be sent to okay but now this balance government is trying to build up question number 3 states what is the targeted area to be covered for palm oil under above mentioned scheme what is this scheme all about as i told you what is government trying to do government wants to cut down the import but it is very difficult to cut down the import as only domestic uh, production cannot solely satiate as well as cannot complete your domestic demand our domestic demand demand is much more higher as compared to the domestic production of oil seed or edible oil or palm oil now government is trying to increase it through its national mission on edible oil edible, edible oil and oil palm that is n m e o o p government will provide every help from plantation of the crop germination maintenance seed gardens nurseries micro irrigation harvesting tool custom hiring centers come come harvesters etc etc everything would government would be providing so what is the targeted area which we want to cover under palm oil in the above mentioned scheme 5 lakh 15 lakh 20 lakh 10 lakh 25 lakh and the answer is d that is your 10 lakh so currently 3.7 lakh hectares is there under palm cultivation and we are hoping to achieve the target of 10 lakh hectares under palm oil cultivation and edible oil cultivation by 2025 2026 that is why i took this particular question under the above mentioned scheme on the same paragraph seed gardens will be provided assistance up to dash for 15 hectares in the northeast and andaman region 250 lakhs 50 lakhs 150 lakhs 200 lakhs and 100 lakhs and the answer is e that is 100 lakhs here if you see seed gardens would be provided a assistance of 100 lakhs for 15 hectares in northeast and andaman region and 80 lakhs for 15 hectares in the rest of india so for andaman and for north is just the exception is there of 100 lakhs on 15 hectare rest of the india it's 80 lakh for 15 hectares i hope you got it next question question number 5 this is not based on our previous paragraph it is a individual question based on farm engineering and mechanization why i included this for one marker such questions may come up you a description of a farm engineering has been given mechan mechanical uh, mechanical product and <coughs> you have to give the answer it has been 2 to 5 bottoms to lift this flow 
a power lift or screw jack or hydraulic cylinders are used which can easily raise or lower the flow which of the following types of flow is being talked about rotary flow gang mold board mold board disc flow single bottom flow so the answer here is gang mold board okay always remember whatever important your agri engineering and mechanization equipments machines are there do cover them in depth and know about their future feature apart from that you can look at an image also and try to imagine whenever you will try to imagine you will connect for example when i look at a harrow first thing which comes into my mind is not about the features not about the words but rather the image of the harrow right so that is why do this practice so here the answer is gang mold board this type has between two to five bottoms to lift this flow a power lift or screw jack or hydraulic cylinders are used okay next next is question number six under capital investment subsidy for construction expansion or modernization of cold storages and storages for horticultural products look at the name extensively which has been there for this credit link scheme capital investment subsidy for construction expansion modernization of cold storage and storages for horticultural production okay so credit linked back end subsidy at the rate of dash percent of capital cost of project is in general areas of construction of cold storage and controlled atmosphere above 5000 metric ton and up to 10000 metric ton is available under this scheme under this scheme particular you will get a subsidy of dash percent to construct expand and modernize any cold storage system which has capacity of 5000 and up to 10000 metric ton what is this overall subsidy which has been provided under this particular scheme 25 percent 10 percent 40 percent or 35 percent or 50 percent let me know so if you look at its solution is d it's 35 percent so national horticultural board is implementing a scheme national horticultural board nhb investment this scheme is nothing but related to capital investment subsidy that is subsidy would be provided to some people for construction expansion and modernization of cold storage what is a cold storage fridge or any warehouse which has an air conditioning uh, condition system okay in which whatever crops are stored those could be stored as refrigerated temperatures lower temperatures so this cold storages and storage units could be build, built for horticultural crops specifically why shelf life is very very less so under this scheme credit linked back in subsidy is provided 35 percent of the capital cost of the project in general areas and general areas in the sense rest of india and 50 percent subsidy for northeast hilly and scheduled areas for the same construction of cold storage i hope you understand this and overall if you see the capacity it's 5000 metric ton to 10000 metric ton i hope that i'm clear here consider the following statements murra Mur so here breeds of different different what are animal husbandry related breeds are given so murra surti and zafrabadi okay now murra location has been given gear forest kutch jamnagar districts of gujarat surti it is from gujarat and Jafrabadi, Haryana, Punjab and Delhi. Now, whatever these animals are there, okay, whatever these buffaloes are there, try to get the location which is the correct answer or which is not the correct answer. You are asked which statement is incorrect and based on that, you have to give the answer. So, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3 and all of the above and here you could see that D actually 1 and 3, Surti is of course from Gujarat but Murra and Jafrabadi, whatever these options are there, those are interchange. So, if you see, Murra is from Haryana, Punjab and Delhi and Zafrabadi is from Gir Forest, Kutch, Jamnagar districts of Gujarat. I hope you understand here the options were interchanged. Surti of course Buffalo is from Gujarat only. I hope you get it. Next question number 8. Identify the following species of fish from the description below. A description has been given of a marine fish. Now this is an observational question. Try to understand and give the answers. Fish are long lived, late maturing fishes distinctive characteristics such as heterocerebral caudal fin similar to those of sharks caudal fin in the sense which is on your back 
so which is on your back shark has a caudal fin right so that is on the head that is your caudal fin and elongated spindle like body that has smooth skinned scaleless and armored with five lateral ro rows of bony plates called scutes caviar is unfertilized eggs also known as roe that is harvested exclusively from this family of fish salted and cured caviar is expensive delicacy in the continental food now understand this whatever fish is there it gives its unfertilized eggs and that unfertilized egg is called as caviar now you have to find out which is that fish which gives out this eggs if you know properly if you have watched national geography or something like that you will understand if you are habit of going and exploring things then also you can very easily give the answer let's try to eliminate some things first thing is hammer headed shark now hammer headed shark are not having five lateral rows of bony plates called as scutes so though hammer headed shark is also a smooth skinned fish but the problem is and it is also scaleless fish hammer headed shark is also not having your what scales but we all know all the sharks they don't give eggs rather they directly give birth to the what their young ones in the stomach only okay so eggs also in the stomach only and stomach only sharks they come out and then they stay into the stomach of the shark for some time so that is why here we cannot say that here eggs will come into the picture stingray again confusing why stingray is also smooth skin without scales but one problem is that stingray doesn't has a caudal fin and more importantly again this bony plates stingray is not having rather stingray is a flat flat fish which actually doesn't has a caudal fin also so that is why stingray eliminated orange salmon roe a scaled fish it is a salmon is a scaled fish it has scales eliminated pacific cod fish cod fish scaled again though even if it is not having scaled it is not smooth skinned it is having silvery layer both salmon and cod fish is having silvery layer on them then what is the answer here yes the river or your uh, saline fish that is your different types of sturgeons so sturgeon gives the unfertilized eggs which are called as caviar so therefore d is the answer so sturgeon is the fish paragraph 9 ground level credit to agriculture has shown an impressive growth in last few years and has always remained higher than the overall targets keeping in view the performance under glc flow during 2013-2014 to 2021 government has increased by 10% over previous years 2020-21 target similarly the corpus for micro irrigation has been also doubled the question more importantly is talking about the ground level credit for agriculture which has been given okay oh, for the purpose of your micro irrigation and whatever their according to their performance overall government has increased 10 percent overall whatever performance according to the performance overall target as well as budget is there that is increased by 10 percent so now comes the question which is based on this particular paragraph as per above mentioned paragraph what is the new target fixed by government for glc for the year of 2021-2022 so for 2022 year what is the overall aim for this next year so from 2013 to 2021 this particular scheme they have showed a good performance now after 2021 that is the year of 2022-2023 what we are going to see or what is the target which has been fixed by the government 16.5 lakh, 15.5 lakh, 14.5 lakh, 13.5 lakh, and 12.5 lakh. Answer is A, that is 16.5 lakh. This is the particular target. An increase of 10% over the previous years, that is 15 lakh crore. So 10% increase is 16.5 lakh crores. Next, which of the following statements are false with respect to above mentioned paragraph? Same paragraph related to GLC, ground link credit. The share of term loan for total GS, GLC increased from 24.95% in 2013 to 40% in 2021. Indian agriculture is characterized by prevalence of small and marginal farmers which has increased from 491 lakhs to 2260 lakhs. And share of GLC 
to small and marginal farmers to total GLC has increased 35% to 52%. We have to find out which is false here with respect to above mentioned passage. Now, did you observe here in this passage, none of the information was given related to total target. None of the information has been given in the next question also, whatever has been mentioned in these statements. So, in similar way, Nabad also will give you a paragraph and questions, whatever would be there, those will not be, you will not get the answers from the paragraph. The paragraph is just to indicate you that what is the topic about next question is going to be. That's what the thing is. So, the answer here is of course B, that is only B is correct. Why? Let's try to understand. So, we, I, see, in India, of course, small and marginal farmers have increased, but here number was there. So, 491 to 2260 lakh. So, false is the answer. So, yes, 1 and 3 is correct. B is wrong here. Okay. So, in Indian agriculture, prevalence of small and marginal farmer is there. It has increased, but I think this number may be wrong here. So, our first statement which we are talking about, yes, it has increased from 491 lakhs, second statement, to 1260 lakh, not to 2260 lakh. So, here 2260 not, it was 1260 and that is the difference here. So, here the examiner made a change in a digit and see the second statement is wrong. Our first and third statement is of course right. So, you could see overall our first statement if you try to look upon, then you will understand the share of the term loan of total GLC has increased 24.9% in 2013 to 2020, 2021. And the third statement which we talked about, it was related to overall whatever percentage is there and that is again your correct point. So, if you see share of GLC to small and marginal farmers to total GLC has also increased from 35% to 55%. So, according to ground link credit, it means whatever at the ground grassroot level, the total small and marginal farmers lending to the total overall GLC lending that has increased. That means now small and marginal farmers are also taking loans from the ground credit, uh, ground link credit. So, this was all about the paragraph. Let's move to the next paragraph. And again, a paragraph based question. Now, you will say that, sir, this is becoming so much difficult. But do a practice. If you go to the phase 2 examination without preparation, just by thinking that, okay, simple questions are going to come and I am going to solve them very easily. It's not going to happen. Nabad will ask you difficult paragraphs in which no information would be provided. Nabad gives such a paragraphs in which you can't even understand that what is this particular scheme. They don't even write the name of the scheme and directly they pound you with a fact, data or very important question related to that particular paragraph only. So, the paragraph is just to understand what type of question has been asked. I still remember in 2022 when I was giving the examination, they asked a question based on agricultural marketing. They didn't even mention any government scheme. They just talked about agricultural marketing in five to six lines. And then they asked a question on ENAM. Then they asked a question which is related to agricultural markets in Karnataka and what that portal is named. They asked such further questions, three questions on such paragraph. So, paragraph would be just to give you a maybe a little bit clue that what is just the topic about. Acts 2022 was the target year of doubling the farmer income. Here the paragraph is wholly based on your doubling the farmer income. 22% increase was there in the net income from the crop production, growth receipts from the other sources surged by dash percent between 2014 and 2019. If the suggestion of economic survey to focus more on non-farm businesses is an indication to improve again the agricultural productivity as well as profits. So, animal husbandry, dairy, fisheries can expect to increase their allocation of funds for the year of 2022-2023. So, here from this passage also you can understand animal husbandry, dairy and fisheries are three important topics for this year. Budget has also maintained to help the maintain agricultural growth around 4% and increase it. Again, you will require the allied activities like whatever we mentioned. What will come at the place of dash? So, Indian agriculture through just crop cultivation, how much was the income 22.6% increase in the income. Then doing allied activities like animal husbandry, dairy, fisheries, how much percent was in increase in the earnings that is asked. So, how much 58.4, 76, 66, 89 or 92. 
and here shockingly the answer is 92.6 percent what it means so if you are doing agriculture in today's india it means that you cannot do just agricultural activity you have to pair your agricultural activity along with the allied activity it may be any allied activity 92 percent of allied activity percent increase is there in the income whereas from just agriculture it is just 22 percent look at the difference 92 is a huge number so you could see here other sources that is animal husbandry if you are having if you are having dairy if you are having fisheries your income increased by 92.6 percent between the year of 2014 and 2019 a very good topic this was next paragraph according to economic survey the livestock industry which includes animal husbandry dairy and fisheries increased at an annual rate of 8.15 percent from 2014 to 2019 at constant prices it has been noted that even segments such as marine product buffalo meat tea coffee dairy product which did not perform well have also shown increase in this year so in spite of that these products have not shown much improvement but still this year we saw that income has been increased because of such activities this bodes well for the agricultural export diversification and strengthening in next years so here we are talking about economic surveys paragraph which is based on total agricultural products and how certain marine or maybe animal husbandry or allied products can increase your income and increase your export and help in your export diversification what is the per person egg availability in india so when we were talking about whatever allied activities were there we talked about marine products we talk about buffalo meat we talk about tea coffee dairy products we talked about eggs so therefore now they are asking what is the per person egg availability in india in india if i am a person and the total number of eggs which are produced if you divide total number of eggs per day per person uh, eggs which are produced and if you divide it by per person okay then how much eggs are available in india for one person and the answer is 62 eggs are available per person in the year 62 eggs were available for per person in the year of 2014 2015 and that availability has increased to now 91 eggs per person per year so the answer here is 91 a so in the year of 2021 2022 after that we have seen that after almost 8 to 10 years in the year of 2014 if you see just 62 eggs were available per person now 91 are available per person next question on the same paragraph because their meat was there meat availability per capita has risen risen to 6.52 kgs per year in 2020-2021 up to from dash kg in 2014-15 again any of the meat numbers were not mentioned in the passage neither was the data of eggs but still see how nabad asks you nabad just asked about the allied whatever activities are there along with agriculture and their total products in export in this meat was there eggs were there therefore a question on eggs therefore a question on meat so how much quantity of meat per kg increased from 2014 to 2021 3.29, 4.71, 5.32, 6.05, 3.84. And the answer is meat availability per capita, per capita in the sense per person. How much meat was available in the year of 2014? It was just 5.32 kgs. So per person, 5 kgs, up till 5 kgs, 5.32 kgs, meat was available in 2014-15, which has directly now increased to 6.52 kgs per year per person in the year of 2021 if you observe so very good stat that how much total meat production has increased second last question which is based on a passage the ministry of agriculture and farming welfare government of india is celebrating world b day at 10 city to ekta nagar narmada gujarat national beekeeping and honey mission of government of india under Atmanirbhar Bharat is implemented through National Bee Board for overall promotion of scientific beekeeping and entrepreneurship among small and marginal farmers. Infrastructure development also and post-harvestment management and support for research and development for achieving the goal of DASH. Now we have to find out what will come at the place of DASH. Black revolution, brown revolution, sweet revolution, yellow revolution and none of the above. For all the candidates, Definitely, 
you would be knowing the answer very easily. But there would be also some candidates who would be confused. Black brown eliminated because here we read in that passage honey was mentioned. So where does honey lie, lie in? Either in yellow or either in sweet revolution. Black revolution is more related to what? Come on, tell me. It is related to your crude oil and petroleum. Brown re revolution, what is it related to? Please mention in the comment section and let me know. And if we see sweet and yellow revolution, yellow revolution is related to oil seeds, but not honey. Do not confuse yourself. Sweet revolution actually is related to honey. So therefore, you could see the here, the honey related improvements. Government is now after green revolution, after various types of other revolution, now government has also started some specialized revolution. For example, sweet revolution related to honey, lavender revolution, which is, re oh, sorry, purple revolution. It's a purple revolution, okay? Purple revolution related to what? Lavender. Lavender is a flower, smelling flower, horticultural flower. So, lavender sprays or scent you can use, right? So, purple revolution, lavender. Other, pink revolution is also there. What is pink revolution related to? Yes, I know. Pink, uh, pink revolution is again related to your what? Various other products also. But mainly now a specialized pink revolution is for lilies. Lily, a flower, right? So in this way, you should be knowing this. Some important uh, points in this time. Next, again, a passage-based question. A disease feature has been mentioned and you have to tell which type of disease that is. This is a problem that generally occurs in horses. Very tricky. And if you are observable, you can give the answer. There is sequel are thought to result from the diets of high concentration of non-fiber carbohydrates. This might be due to improper feeding, overfeeding grain, bacterial toxins and symptoms are hoof wall, hoof inflammation, hoof in the sense is nothing but of course your part of your leg. Okay. Then, yeah, then pain in laminis. Laminis is again your part in your leg. Depression, loss of appetite and slow and painful walk. They cannot walk properly. Okay. Now, Milk fever, no. Milk fever happens in most of the cattle, okay, as well as your uh, other, uh, your domesticated animals, even happens in pigs also, as well as horses. Grass titani, now grass titani happens in horses, but it is not associated, which is related to food disease or related to this particular disease, which is more of a deficiency disease. Grass titani is because of the vector. Then lamentis, we'll talk about thymine deficiency. Now, thymine deficiency, B-complex deficiency, B-complex deficiency is more related to growth, related to your neural and overall mental development. That is why I don't think thymine and molybdenum toxicity, it is nothing but related to nutrient related deficiency disease only, but not related to your, this particular problem we are talking in horse. If you see horse, if you observe, lamentis is that disease which is associated with the horses. What happens in lamentis? This is a problem in the horses as they grow old. If you are providing good uh, protein content to the horses, but it, if their food is not having good non-fiber carbohydrates, if they are not getting energy time to time, which is not removed from the body, but stays in the body for some time, then because of such improper feeding as well as certain bacterial toxins, you will feel that overall the legs of the horses, those are affected because of this Lamentis disease. I hope you get it and we end the session here. Thank you very much. See you next time. Okay. So we gone through various questions today. Very much difficult questions were there today. And I hope that you learn today from this specific section. Thank you very much. See you next time.